Diabetic patients tend to suffer from a host of conditions that afflict them, especially in their mouth. So one of the things that is more common in a diabetic would be bone loss or periodontitis. Now the other things that you'll notice is sometimes they'll have a dry mouth and they may have a propensity for developing fungal infections or bacterial infections. Now that's important to know when we take out teeth. So let's say that we take a tooth out in a diabetic patient. We need to be very vigilant about monitoring them through their healing process and not just because of infection but also because they don't heal as well. So diabetics actually have a thickening and a stiffening of their capillaries which causes them to be a little bit weaker, a little bit leakier and then they tend to have protracted healing, a little less predictable healing and can develop more complications. Now if you're dealing with a diabetic who has a well controlled blood sugar level, say in the 4 to 6 millimole per liter range, then probably they're going to be okay when you're working on them. If this is someone who maybe doesn't have well controlled uh, blood sugar, then we need to be making a, some other considerations and one of those would be that you might want to limit your epinephrine. Now epinephrine can cause a breakdown of glycogen which can cause the blood sugar to spike up a little bit and this is not ideal in a brittle diabetic or someone who has poorly controlled blood sugars. So consider limiting it like you would for say a cardiac patient where maybe you'd avoid it altogether or you might limit it to say two carps of 1 to 100,000 epi or maybe four carps of 1 to 200,000 epinephrine. A couple of tips for managing a diabetic patient very very safely in your office. So one of those tips is to get a good picture of their health conditions. So are they a newly diagnosed diabetic or have they suffered from it for many years? Now if they've had it for many years they're probably on top of things. They've got the medications dialed in, their blood sugars in a pretty tightly regulated window and they could probably tell you what their number is if you ask. So that's a safer patient to be working on than maybe a newly diagnosed patient who's not checking their blood sugars as often as they should be. Maybe they haven't figured out their medications and they're not sure what their blood sugar level typically is. So other tip that I could give you would be seeing these patients early in the morning after they have a meal, which means that their blood sugars will be replenished at the time that they see you. You should keep your appointments short. So make sure that you only do maybe a quadrant of work at a time. Keep your local anesthetic to a minimum in them because they typically have some degree of renal impairment. Now, this is associated with diabetics in most cases. The degree of renal impairment can be depending upon the degree of diabetes that they have and how well controlled it is. So if you're giving them lots of anesthetics, basically they're at a higher risk for toxicity due to those metabolites and the anesthetic not being cleared as efficiently by the kidneys. So try to keep it to a limited part of the mouth. Pain management in diabetics is an interesting one. So NSAIDs tend to have an effect on the insulin secreting cells of the pan a pancreas. Now, if you give them NSAIDs, you may put them at risk for some blood sugar issues that you don't want them to experience. So they're not sure what the mechanism for this is exactly, but to be safe, you should just stay clear of that class of drug. Maybe consider acetaminophen instead for any type of pain control. Now with our surgical procedures we want to be very diligent, very precise like you would with anyone but in diabetics especially. So don't cause any extra trauma say for example from trying to reflect a flap even farther to stretch it a little bit for more visibility with your periosteal versus taking your scalpel and extending it with either a you know, vertical incision or another tooth forward for example. If you try to extend a flap with your periosteal or just stretch it a bit, you're going to end up tearing it very easily because diabetics have very brittle, friable tissue and they don't heal well already. So torn flaps heal pretty poorly to begin with, in diabetics especially, and you're also opening the door now for infection. So they are higher risk patients for infection to begin with, not a good situation. So be very diligent in your surgical procedures. If they develop any infection, either preoperatively or postoperatively, you want to treat their infections very aggressively and very promptly. And that's because their immune status isn't quite what, that, what it would be in a normal healthy patient. So get on top of things. Don't be afraid to prescribe potent antibiotics or chlorhexidine rinses, do uh, incision and drainage procedures. Whatever you need to get these patients cleared of their infection is a good approach to take. Now, Final thing to talk about here is sometimes you'll be working on these patients and they start to get maybe a little bit dizzy, maybe their mood changes, they get agitated, kind of sweaty, tachycardic. This is a sign they might be starting to have some issues with their blood, blood sugar. If they do, what you want to do is you want to get them something that they can take, so a sugar source. You should have in your fridge at the office a orange juice or a non-diet can of pop or soda. 
Now, if you give that to them, typically within a few minutes after they ingest it, things should be going a little better. They should be starting to feel a little more normal. That is an emergency treatment for these patients when they start to have one of these episodes. Now, if you're an IV provider, you might have a line in and you could do an IV dextrose treatment, which is going to give you the same result.